Hey, what's up? Sean T here. Welcome to Trust and Believe. And I'm so excited. I know you're probably looking in like, Sean T, you're not at the Transformation Center. Well, you know, I went somewhere really special, probably a place that a lot of you have either been before or want to go. And I'm just going to give you a little hint. What happens here actually doesn't stay here, but the slogan is what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And I'm in Vegas and I had the privilege of going to one of the most amazing experiences that I've ever been to. So a lot of people go to shows in Vegas, but I had a great experience and I am so proud and so happy to introduce to you guys the best storyteller I've ever met literally in my entire life. And before, uh, before we get to my storyteller, I know he's probably like, that's not really my title, but I think that is a superpower that makes him special beyond his craft. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you Matt Franco, thank you for being on Trust and Believe. Thanks for having me. Transformation stories. Now, there might be a lot of people who are like, what kind of transformation did he have? But my question to you before we get to that, and before sure. we get, I know a lot of people might already know who you are, which is really great. And if you don't, you're in for a great surprise. But um, how did you become so well at storytelling? Wow, uh, what a good question. I know, I, gonna, I told you I was gonna throw you off guard. First of all, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I aspire to be a good storyteller, so it's, it's great to hear that. Uh, I think it comes from experience and doing a lot of it, right? Uh, here in Vegas, we've done 1,300 shows almost at this point. Um, so I like to think that I've gotten better at it over time, just from getting in front of audiences and actually doing it. I really believe experience is the best teacher. It's good to practice a lot, but getting out there and doing it is, uh, is what really helps. So, I mean, I've been also trying to do that since I was four years old. I got into it. And for me, you know, magic is about the story. I'm a magician by title, but really it's about bringing the audience in and making them have a good time. If it's just tricks, you can't watch that for 90 minutes because I think you'd get bored after the first few how did you do that. Yeah. Right? So I want something to make people care and bring them in. I think what's really interesting about your storytelling and your show and your charisma is that you literally take people on a transformation like every other, I want to say every other second, but I would be a little, being <laughs> a little dramatic if I said that, but sure. literally every other minute you're taking people on a transformation. And this might be a really tough situation, uh, question for you, because a lot of my fans out there, they're going through a weight loss transformation. Maybe they're, you know, got a new job. Maybe they got a divorce, a new house, whatever kind of lifelong transformation. And so when I was watching your show last night, um, and for those of you who um, want to know what I'm talking about, so he has a show <laughs> in Vegas at the link, and it is sick. But um, it is the sickest. Well, I've never really been to a magic show, but it's the sickest storytelling show, magic show I've ever been to. But anyway, you know, a lot of people are on these lifelong journeys of transformation and, you know, they, they start out at maybe 100 pounds, 100 pounds overweight and they want to lose 100 pounds and they go through this journey and they connect every step of the way. But what you do is you literally take people on a journey and they don't even know that they transform. What is it like to make people free, not stress about what's happening along the way and enjoy the process. Oh, that's the, that's the best part for me, right? So again, it's about transforming what people are experiencing. When, when they're in the room for that 90 minutes, I want them to forget about the emails they gotta catch up on, their deadline at work. That's the real magic for me, is like to take them out of their everyday life for a moment and make it special and make it even better. Yeah. You know, that, that's the best part for me. That's what I'm trying to do. I get just excited by seeing people laugh and smile as I do when they say, wow, you know, it's just about having a good time. Yeah, but speaking of real magic, I think the real magic uh, was, and I don't want to give away too much of the show. So if I'm giving away too much, just no. be like, Shanti, chill. No, no, go for um, it. <laughs> uh, and it, there's, there's other people here. You guys can laugh if you think I'm funny. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, you know, I think the real magic is actually your journey and in the show you show parts of your journey and the imperfect moments that happen along the way sure and i'm gonna tell you right now i don't well you probably weren't looking at me when you were doing your show but there were times where i was like oh, I oh saw my god!" expression from you a couple oh of times. <laughs> so like there this. were times where i was like this because i couldn't believe that well I, not that i couldn't believe it but i was so appreciative of the fact that you were so transparent in 
you know, the struggles, the journey. So tell me, I really want you to go back to the beginning okay. and tell me about the journey. I'm gonna ask you questions along the way of how you connected to certain struggles and how yeah. you overcame them. But yeah. like literally tell me like when this began for you. Four years old, saw magic on TV, got sucked in. Next thing you know, I'm doing it and show and tell in kindergarten. You know, every kid kind of goes through the magic phase at some point. Okay, so I got a question. Yeah. I told you I'm gonna interrupt you along sure, the way. Sure. Cause I used to love show and tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I my first show and tell was I brought my my buddy to class. Didn't think that the, I didn't know that the, all the boys would laugh at me because I brought a doll to class. But <laughs> you're going, you're literally going to show and tell, doing a a magic show. Sure. Do you remember what was the first magic trick you did? And yeah, can you tell us a, what it was? It's a classic. It's um a little vase, little blue plastic vase, and a little red ball, and you cover it, and the ball disappears. That was the first one. I did three different tricks. That was. And he's not going to give us a secret because if you know anything about magic, they're not allowed to tell us. That's but, right. I'm not. I'm sworn to secrecy. And we couldn't even get it from a four-year-old. I mean, a five-year-old. That's crazy. That's okay. Right. Continue. Continue the story. Well, I just stuck with it. You know, most kids leave that passion for magic behind, and uh, I had the patience for it. I loved it, and I just started doing shows at a very young age. You know, I was the the kid going and performing at the birthday parties when I was the same age as the kids who were celebrating the birthday, you know? And then I continued doing shows anywhere that would have me all through high school, continued through college. I actually studied business in college to support the magic habit. You know, it was always just about getting to that end road of finding a way to make magic work as a living. Cause you know, and for years people said to me, wow, do you really think you can make a living doing that though? You know, or you say, yeah, I'm a magician. And they go, oh, what instrument do you play? You know, it's kind of a, a weird, <laughs> Uh, field, right? Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. niche, right? But uh, I always believed that it was possible, whether that was crazy or not. It's just what I believed. And I was intent on, you know, I, I was insistent upon making that true. It's so interesting because obviously, you know, the podcast is called Trust and Believe, and I have believe yeah. on my arm. So <laughs> I don't know if you which camera I should look at. But, um, <laughs> Where did that belief come from, though? And I know that is a tough question for a lot of people. Yeah. But I know you said you like you're persistent, you kept going. But where did that actual belief come from? I think family had a lot to do with it. Very supportive family. Uh, both my parents, older brothers, grandparents uh, were just so like encouraging that I really could do it. And then I had a couple of uh, inspirations in the magic community, even people that I looked up to for years. Um, that when I was at that point where it's like, oh, I guess I was in my early 20s, kind of finishing school at that point of, am I really going to do this? Am mm -hmm. I really going to take a stab at magic full time? And uh, people who said to me, you can absolutely do this. And I thought, all right, that's enough for me. That's all I need to hear. I'm, yeah. I'm ready to go. I think support systems are really important for you to actually succeed at transformations. You know, a lot of people out there, they're going at their personal transformation alone. And sometimes mm -hmm. it can feel really sad for people. Mm -hmm. And and one of the things that, I, a couple of things that I saw at your show last night is you didn't just stay on stage. You literally, I it was the guy Kevin who you called up for one of the one of the tricks. Yeah, from, from in tricks. the audience. Yes, yeah, from yeah. in the audience. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna give too much away. That's okay. But I think that there was a moment that I mean I was enjoying the show, but I was also processing the experience. So don't think I wasn't just like enjoying the show. But there was a moment where we cheered for Kevin and yes. you left stage and he was on that stage by himself. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this is true or not, but maybe for the first time in his life, he had an audience full of a couple hundred people cheering 600. for him, 600 people. <laughs> Just in case y'all didn't know, Homeboy had 600 people at the show. Uh, uh, Come but on had, now. Right, but you had 600, he had 600 people cheering for him. And you, I don't know if that ever happened before and I, I definitely can assume that there was someone that in the last what five, four or five years that you've been doing a show that has been called on that stage that ne that has never been on the stage before had people cheering for them just because they decided to step outside of their comfort zone and come on the stage. Yep. And you know, I was what was really interesting to me is I was I was looking at Kevin and I said, Okay, Kevin's on the stage, we're all cheering for him. You left the stage. This has to be uncomfortable, but the minute you walked back on stage, his body was just kind of like, Thank God he came back. Sure. And so, but that takes me to something really important that when I was watching, you know, America's Got Talent and the YouTube videos of you, 
you had something, someone really special that did that for you. And can you talk about your grandmother for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure a lot of people in the audience wanted to cry, but it was so much comedi comedic energy in there that it was hard to. Sure. But talk about your grandma, because I think she was that, that really strong support person for you. Absolutely, yeah. She's still with us, 90 years old, yep. 90 years young. Or she is that support person Yeah, she still. still is, really. Um, you know, she was just always there for me. She always believed, you know? And, she would sit there with me for hours and I would practice, you know, card tricks for her. And she'd say, Matt, you know, I'd, I'd be seven years old, 10 years old, or throughout all the years, 17 years old, mm -hmm. 27 years old. And I'd, she'd say, Matt, you know, I saw what you did there. You, your pinky was underneath and then you did the move there. And she'd be exactly right. And I'd say, no, no, that's not what I did. Let me try again. Let me try again. <laughs> or in the middle of the trick, she'd say, oh, I saw this. She was just brutally honest, which was super helpful. And I'd say, okay, I got to start all over again. And every time, you know, we'd be five minutes into the routine mm -hmm. and I'd go all the way back to the beginning. And she was like, never lost her patience with that. She was like, all right, we're going to start back from the beginning again. That's amazing. Question for you. Yeah. There are a lot of people out there that are trying to lose weight yeah. and they lose 20 pounds. Yeah. And they have to start back over. Uh -huh. And then they, they may lose 30. And then they have to start over again. Yeah. And, you know, I, I want to say this first. Like, there's something really amazing about the way you connect to people. And so I, part, part of me is, like, I'm looking at the young kid that's doing these magic tricks. And I'm like, wow, he has so much power and determination and belief to start over again and not get discouraged what is a message that you can give to people that have to keep starting over again? You got to just keep trying. I mean, it's always, it's, it's hard. You really can't compare yourself to other people and where they are on their journey. It's, it's you, right? So like you figure out how to progress, how to get better. Um, always striving for that perfection, but being okay with it not being perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And just always kind of trying to push it forward and make it better. It's like, that, that's just, I feel like it's like in me. I love that. I love working on stuff and improving and seeing the differences, right? I love looking back and seeing where I started and where I've gotten to and, you know, that's what it's about. It's about the journey, like, and enjoying the process. Yeah. Not just about getting to that end goal and you might not always hit it, right? But you try to get as close as you can and enjoy the process of getting there. You know, it's so, like, for some people listening and, and, uh, for me and my journey, and we, we are at a place in our lives right now where we feel successful, we've been through the struggle, but uh, I really like for people to, to see what was kind of like the biggest struggle, what was the hardest part of your journey, and then what, was the, what were the tools that you used to really overcome them? I'm, I'm really like a glass half full type of person, so all the negativity, I've always really tried to spin it as best I can. Um, I'd say the hardest thing to do, and you know, like I was saying, when you're trying to take magic and make it a full-time career, in my case, and whatever, whatever it is that you're aspiring to do, mm -hmm. in my case, it was like making magic a full-time living. That's hard to do. We all know there are bills to pay. Right. So, you know, it was really taking every gig I possibly could. I, ha I, I didn't have the pleasure, the, the privilege to pick and choose what gigs I wanted to do. So some gigs were great where it's a beautiful theater on a college campus and other times you're, it's noon on a, a stage lower than this table, right? And you're performing at lunchtime and no one even knows they're about to see a show and you gotta turn that into something. It's performing in the street and doing a hat pitch at the end and getting people to give you money because yeah, you need it to yeah, eat, yeah. right? It's uh, pitching to a restaurant owner that you're gonna come in and perform for two hours every Thursday night at their restaurant while people are waiting for their food. You know, it's like a anywhere that will possibly have you. Those are the things you have to do that aren't glamorous. It's traveling all over the country, out of, practically living out of your car to, to make ends meet, to keep that dream alive. It's also making 95% of the work, writing contracts, booking travel, doing all the, being a one-man operation, doing the marketing just for that 5% of the time that I got to be on stage and live, live the dream that I wanted. You know, you, know, um, <laughs> you just reminded me of something. One of the reasons why I love talking to people like you is because it's almost therapy even for me because I go back into <laughs> my life and I'm like, oh wow, there was a time when I did that. So I have a really funny story. So I was in high school <laughs> and I hadn't even like, I hadn't even become, a, I haven't become, I never danced. 
I didn't do any of that. My mom told me when I was eight years old, I asked her to be a ballerina. I was like, can I be a ballerina? And yeah. she said, little boys don't dance. I think she was a little, she really thought I wanted to be on, put a tutu on, even though now she probably regrets it and probably would have put one on me. Right, right. But I remember, so I would try to dance at any point, any chance I would get. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the music department at my school and I was like, I want to perform at the mall. Like for no reason. Mm -hmm. And so we did this, me and this, uh, me and this girl did this dance to Mortal Kombat. I don't know if you remember that song, the Mortal Kombat song. The theme song? The theme of course song. I do. In the middle of the mall. And I'm like, what am I doing in the middle of the mall? And right before I went out, there's, you know, we had a stage. No right. one's even like paying attention. Of course. But the youthful energy was like, just do it. Now, there are a lot of people out there who, are afraid to begin because they think they're going to fail. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, can you give me that one little thing that you attach to when you feel like, ah, oh, this is really tough, or maybe, maybe back in a time when you were like, I don't know if I can do this, besides belief, because belief is one thing, but is there any one particular moment that you can attach to to say, this is what you can attach to to actually achieve your goals? that I can attach to. Yeah, like um, for instance, for me, and this might be a little deep, but now if I go through struggle, you know, I was molested as a kid and I'm like, if I went through that, like I can, de like this is nothing. Maybe yeah. it's something like that. Yeah, I mean, for sure an epiphany for me was America's Got Talent and winning that show. And truthfully it was, it's almost like, I mean, I don't want to make it sound negative, but I, I, a lot of times I joke that it's psychological torture. But that's how reality te television can be. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a long process. I mean, you don't see it all uh, on the screen because some of it's live to live, but some of it's taped ahead of time. So it's like it was a year of my life pretty wow. much that I was like not only still making a living touring the college circuit at the time, but also, you know, flying in and out to trying to put together these TV appearances for the show. And it's, and it's not just appearances, it's a competition. Mm. And there's a, a panel of people that are meant to judge you. And then the whole world's watching, judging you and the YouTube comments and the whole thing. You've got all this sort of things being thrown at a lot of positivity, also a lot of negativity. And uh, that was like a really crazy experience. And I think it really helped prepare me for lots of other things that were to come. Um, a lot of people, you know, come to me and say, like, how do you even deal with it? You know, it, having a show in Vegas, having to do 10 shows a week, having to have this happen, that happen. And like, you learn to take it all in stride. It does help to be able to look back and say, well, if I can do that, I can do this. Yeah. The more experiences you have to look back on, the more it makes it easier. So you, you got to have those experiences. Absolutely. All right, everybody. So when we come back from this quick commercial break, we're going to get into some more fun about Matt, and there's something that I keep seeing about him right now, and I can't wait to reveal it to you. We'll be right back. You thought I was playing? Huh. All right, we're back. We're super inspired. Uh, we're going to have some fun right now because, as you know, Matt is extremely inspiring and amazing, as you can see. Hey, Matt, I have to reveal something. We're going to have some fun here. Let's there is something that I keep looking at that a lot of people who watch my show or listen to my show know that I have an obsession with, and that is sneakers. Oh, yeah. And I was going to wait until the end of <laughs> this show to reveal it, but it's literally pulling my energy. Spoiler alert. Can you alert. lift those feet up? Boom. Wait, Let's lift see. them up. What do we got? There we go. Holy crap. What kind of shoes are those? These? I think they're Steve Madden. Chip, you approve? They've got them in different colors, too. You should check them out. They are. This is like a loud shoe for me. I'm like, there it is. Look at I that. like it. You I like them? it. I like it. So, Steve Madden. Uh, Chip, can you go online and order those for me? Too? <laughs> <laughs> Don't um, deal. You know what's interesting is your style. I mean, you know, I see you in your show. You have black jeans on. You had a navy blue shirt. I was really studying you last night. I remember it all. Crazy. But what I, it was interesting because I think a lot of people out there they like to be 
when they go on stage, they like to be loud. Mm -hmm. And I I really believe that the more silent you are, the more impactful you are. Okay. So I was just like, wow, he didn't try to wear a really bright red collared shirt because we're in Vegas and sure. his stage crew has on black. I think what was really amazing is that your personality really came through without you having to try and dress a certain way. Now, I know you didn't try to impress me with the dress today, but I'm very impressed. Oh, okay. But what is it like going on stage and really connecting to who you are so that the audience, you know, the audience can connect to you? And, and, and this is a two-part question. How can you help people out there believe in themselves, like who they are right now, even if they can't afford the Louboutins or the right. Louis Vuitton bag? Like, where does that come from? I think it's just all about being comfortable in your own skin. It all comes back to authenticity, um, trying to be as authentic as possible all the time. And for me, just because I'm having a show in Vegas or when we were opening the show in Vegas and there are a lot of outside influences that try to tell you that you have to dress a certain way, you got to have the sparkly jackets, you got to do this, you got to do that. I try my best to ignore all that and just continue to be myself. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing in terms of the content of my show. A lot of, you know, when I came to Vegas, people say, okay, well, you know, if you're going to have a Vegas show, you got to have a tiger, you got to have a big box, you got to have dancers, you got to have this and that. And I said, well, I, I'd, I'd like to do it my way. You know, mm. even though it's, it seems kind of gutsy, I just, I, I, this is, I have to do what feels right to me yeah, yeah, and yeah. stay true to that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what it really just comes down to. And, um, you know, so when I'm on stage and I, my dress is a little bit boring, you know, it's uh, you got to deal with it because that's me, baby. But, you know, it's funny. <laughs> it's, it's not boring, though. Oh, good, like, good, that's good, the thing. Glad. Like, I mean, yeah, the way I describe it compared to some dope shoes, people <laughs> might be like, oh, my gosh. But I think that's what it is, because there are a lot of people out there who feel like they have to live up to X or they might admire a way celebrity dresses. And you really can rely on the internal you. You know, and I just think that's that's really important. Uh, another question. When you go into the audience now, this is going to you might not be able to answer this question. All right. Because I know, you know, it's magic. So. I think I'm going to answer. Okay, Let's cool. see. That's my prediction. <laughs> I feel bad asking you this. Do you know who you're going to call before the show? No, not at all. Not at all. You could come to the show again tonight. It would be all different people, of course. But also, I don't. You know, I generally don't see the audience as they're coming in. I have a secret hiding spot. Sometimes I like to watch, yeah. see the energy in the room. Uh, I didn't do that last night. But, um, I, yeah, I generally have no idea who I'm going to pull up until pretty much in the moment. Now, sometimes throughout the show, you know, I know what's going to happen. So I know I need to select a person for this, a person for that. So I watch. I, I like to read people's energy and oh, see wow, wow. who's in what kind of mood, you know, because oh my God, that throw, that's what keeps my job so interesting. People say to me, believe it or not, they're like, oh, does it, does it ever get boring, you know, performing every night? I'm like, first of all, no, of course not. But second of all, the audience is so involved in the show. It is different for me every, every time. So you mentioned Kevin, and sometimes Kevin is Bob, and sometimes Bob is Mary. It's always a different person, and sometimes it's a 10-year-old. You know what I mean? Oh gosh, like, so yeah. literally every single moment of the show is always different, not just when people are on stage, but the crowd gives you different energy, yeah, yeah, different yeah. vibes. Some audiences are more drunk than others. Some are quieter. Some are, uh, English is not their first language, you know? Uh, so I like you that. never, yeah. I mean, you never know exactly what you're going to get. So it's always a little bit of a surprise for me, but I have gotten pretty good at reading people over time to know when I do pick someone to come on stage what type of energy they're going to have. And I do watch. I watch a lot during the show. So when it gets three quarters of the way in, uh, I'm usually not going to be surprised when I pick so-and-so and they come up. I have an idea of how they react to things because I've been watching and I can see. And, but that'll surprise me too because sometimes they're very animated in their chair. Oh. And then as soon as they get on stage, freeze up, you know? So you never know. It's interesting you talk about reading people and we're talking about people in the audience because... I mean, I had a lot of great but favorite parts of the show, but you want to know it was my favorite part, I think, of the entire experience last night. What was it? Oh, my gosh. So you have to know I'm like a really emotional person. Like I really connect to energy. And, I, and, I, and that's another reason why I really enjoy being on the show, at the show, in the show, because I helped pick up some, something. I, have, I did ah. something in the show. <laughs> but, um, you know, when I, walk, when I walk on the stage, it can be anywhere from 
300 people, maybe to 5,000 people, there's a certain kind of energy in the room and you have to assess that. It's kind of like getting certified in CPR. The first thing they say is survey the scene, which I like how you have, you looking overhead. But my favorite part of the show was there, were, there was a couple sitting behind us. It was mm -hmm. an older couple. Mm -hmm. And they were both cracking up. And the gentleman at one point said, oh, this guy is good. <laughs> and it was what I was thinking at the moment. I was just like, wow, like that's really incredible how you are able to fill the, the room up with positive energy. And, you know, no one, none of us knew how you were feeling that day. You know what I mean? Like you and Tiana could have gotten to a fight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even though I know you won't fight Tiana because she's so sweet. But she you is. never know. How do, I think a lot of people, they go through stressful moments and they have a hard time bringing out that positivity. And I'm talking about this because you actually talked about it a little earlier. How do you bring out that positivity even, because you talked about like twisting, twisting it. How do you bring out that positivity even if something's not so great? A couple things you touched on there. So this is interesting because if I'm having a bad day, like you said, oh, you know, we don't know how you're feeling that day. The truth is, if I'm having a bad day, I even more so look forward to going to work because I love what I do. Mm. Truthfully, like whatever issues I'm having kind of go out the door the second I step out on the stage and, and it's because then it's not about me anymore. It's about them. It's about us all together. So for me, it's like if I'm having a bad day, oh, my God, even more so do I look forward to sharing what I love with people. It really is. And, and it is about them. You know, like you said about Kevin was on stage and you left and he was up there by himself with all these people cheering for him. And yeah. maybe that's the first time he's felt that. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I always want the people who do participate to feel empowered. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I'm there to quote unquote fool them, I really want to make sure that they, that they feel comfortable and they're having a good time. That's what it's about. But yeah, I don't know if I answered your question or not, no, but yeah. I had a good time answering. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Speaking of good time, we're going to have a good time right now. Okay. Okay. Can we do the floss together? Of course. Because you know what's so funny? All right, I'm a dancer. I've been a dancer. I've been a dancer my entire life. Yeah. I started dancing professionally when I was about, well, professionally, professionally when I was in my later 20s. But the floss was something that I saw on YouTube and I could not do it to save my life. And I was like, why can't I do this? And I was like, mm -hmm. all these people that I know they can't dance better than me can slay this dance move. So can we just do it together? Of course we can. Okay. It took me a long time to get it too. I know, but I think you do it faster than me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ready? Can you guys see us? Are we starting left or right? Do we have to Let's be in start on here? the left. All right. All right. One, two, three. Are we doing uh, slow? Uh, which, so, okay, go. We're going this uh, way. This yeah. is left. Okay. I'll follow you. Do, do. There we go. Is it now? I'm having trouble. I know. I told yeah, you. Look, I'm doing it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> anyway, it? I just wanted to have some fun in here. Oh, we're stopping now. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Come on. We were just. Getting... Can you do this though? What is it? I don't, hey. know. I don't know. For I, those of you who are right. listening, I'm changing the dance move. In my move. head, I'm doing it. I His don't wife know is here. Like don't it. worry about it. His wife. Is, <laughs> but can you dip it low? Oh, ah, here we go. Pick it up slow. There it is. Ah. See, I'm used to following you from the insane. <laughs> there you is. go. There you go. We're doing ski abs after this. No, we're not doing ski okay. abs. I kind of did those this morning. <laughs> um, speaking of ski abs and insanity, what is how important it is for you to stay fit uh, yeah. before you? Go out, like how important is it for your lifestyle being as though you're always in front of people? I try, you know, I try, <laughs> I, I do. There was a sigh at the end of try. <laughs> Don't we all feel like that sometimes yeah, though? Do. It feels like the constant, you know, like I said, you, you strive for the perfection. It might, well, in some cases, I guess it's here. No. So in some cases you can have perfection. No. Um, we all strive for it, but everyone is in a different place in their journey. I'm sure you have goals that you want to hit. Yeah, in of fitness, course, right? always, always. Isn't that always. crazy to think about though? Think about it, right? I mean, it, it looks like you must have always. hit them all by now. Um, you know, it's interesting now that we're switching the interview. Uh, <laughs> no, it's interesting because there have been times over my life where I was like, I felt like the most fittest or I was like the most ripped that I've ever been, but yeah. I wasn't the happiest at that moment, you interesting, know? Right. And now at, I'll be 41 in a few days. Um, and now I feel like the most fit. I've ever been mm -hmm. not just because I might have a six pack, you know, but I'm, I, I might. allow myself might, might, 
<laughs> no, um, I'm waiting for him to tell me to take off my shirt. Uh, no, I'm kidding. So, no, I mean, like, I still... Who are they? <laughs> is and, everybody um... here? With... <laughs> Maybe at the end of the show, we'll do a little behind the scenes with a little more kind of dancing that we like. But uh, I don't have a thong on today, so we have uh, to keep it cute. I do, so it's no. fine. <laughs> um, oh, my gosh, I forgot what I was talking about. Thong. Thong, no. Um, you want me to show it now? Well, why not? <laughs> I mean, let's go. But what was I saying? Does anybody remember? Uh, so Something about no, I wasn't. It doesn't any matter. Attention. It doesn't matter. We have water. We have smiles. Um, I think what's most important here is is how to have fun in life. Yeah. Um, oh, I know what I was saying. Now that you said that, I remember. I still have my donuts. Oh right, I right, still. Right. Um, I saw that you were posting. Yeah, I eat donuts. I eat donuts Instagram last donuts. night. I was like, I said to Tiana, I was like, wow, he eats donuts. That's the thing. I think that people people always they put um, they put barriers in their way. And I think in order to get to a certain level of comfortability, now I'm not saying comfort zone like, oh, you shouldn't work harder. I'm saying of, of comfortability and not giving, not putting so much pressure on yourself to be perfect and to really kind of live a life that feels really great for you. I mean, that's what I do. I mean, there have been times, like I said, I was 4% body fat. There have been times where I didn't like the way I looked even in my fitness you know, career. Right. And I think that now I'm making adjustments um, I just feel really good. Like I, at one point I stopped drinking for a year and a half. Um, then I became like vegan for a little bit, pescatarian. And now I'm back to really that vegetarian lifestyle. Yep. So what, if any, were some adjustments that you made in your, in your career where you're like, okay, I'm going here, but maybe this isn't working. It could be, it could be nutrition or fitness or maybe just even, you know, ma being magical. It has to do with nutrition quite a bit for me, mm -hmm. um, and fitness and all of that. Um, I, I guess uh, vegan, I did the vegan, I've been doing the vegan thing for mm -hmm. like full time for like, I think a year and a half now ish. Um, but I've been sort of like weaning my way onto it for the past three years. Yeah. Um, for me, and you said it was, a, you said something in there about feeling good. And for me, that really is a big part of it. It's not just quote unquote being in front of people, but also about really feeling great. Mm -hmm. um, so trying to eat right um, and trying to exercise to feel good and to feel confident and to be in a place where I can uh, be comfortable in my own skin. Back to that. Yeah, you know? why not? So um, I try. Thank you. Uh, before, we, before we go and sign off, I want to say thank you, obviously, for being here today. But Thanks for having I think me. you have a great way, like we talked about a little bit ago, of connecting to people. And I know you can't see the people who are like watching the show or listening to the show. I see some of them. But he is a magician. I'm not going to actually do a magic trick, but I will, um, like, can you magically go beyond the, the camera and give people motivation just to kind of how to live their best life? Right here? Right here. here. Oh, okay. Right here. Uh, believe in yourself. You can do it. Uh, it's all about believing in yourself and being comfortable with yourself. So do it. Get out there. Whatever it is you're trying to achieve, you can make it happen. If you don't believe me, believe Shanti. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> and before we go... I want to tell you that I have the magic before. Oh? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is And I have a magic trick for you. Oh, I can't wait to I see it. I just did it. You didn't see it. Uh-oh. No, I didn't. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, oh. I'm just kidding. Is really I thought you were actually going to believe me. No, I actually did. So I did this show called Pippin. Okay. Um, yeah. You ever heard of Pippin? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so in the show, uh -huh. we had to do a couple magic tricks. And it was really interesting that the magician that came in make, made us take like a, it was like an oath to not tell anyone how we did a particular magic. Well, who was it? Do you remember the name? I was, no, this was 2006. Okay. So it was a long time ago. ago. 13 years ago. Yeah. Um, it was one of my first musicals that I did. But um, I think, now I'm going to just ask you a couple magician questions because that's, you know, that's I'm your sure specialty. some magicians will tune in. Hello, yeah. magicians. So is it, is, it, um, is it really hard to keep it a secret? I don't even think about it. To mm. me, it's not even about the secrets. I talk a little bit about this during the show. Yeah. I want it to be enjoyable whether I show you the secret or not. I want to be able to break down the method because I think the methods can be very interesting. Mm. That's part of what, what got me into magic, right? Was yeah. like yeah. seeing how simple something was or how intricate something was. That's super cool too. And you can appreciate that from, from that angle, right? Yeah, so yeah. for me, it's like I want it to be interesting whether you know the secret or not because of the story or because of the humor or because of the inspirational moment or whatever it is 
that all ties it together. And I reference it to movies in the oh, show. Yeah, yeah, you, do. you know, I say you could watch the movie. Most people don't overanalyze the special effects and try to figure out how they're done. You know, it's fake and fictional, but you love it anyway. I really would love for magic to be the same way. And that's sort of my philosophy on it. Whether you know how it's done or not, if you're laughing and having a good time, my job's done. Yeah, I think that's, that was really interesting, that analogy you brought up in the show, because that made me, I was like, Sean, stop trying to figure out how And it's hard. It, you it's know? hard, right? And I can relate to that, because usually you get into magic not because you want to fool people, but because you like that feeling of being fooled. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and it, you like it because it's shows you something, you, a mystery, it's mystical, it's, it's a mystery yeah. and you can't figure it out. And there's a part of you that wants to be analytical and figure it out too. So it's that weird sort of balance that's kind of just inherently present in magic. But me, I just try to look past it. I really do. I don't even think about it. Yeah. I, I work on the method to try to make it seamless so that other people aren't thinking about it either. Matt, what is your superpower? I have, do, I, do I have to have one? Who's to say to, I have one? Oh, maybe you don't. I don't know if I do. I like to think it's connecting with people. I like, it's, uh, I like to think it's making people escape their day for a little bit and have a good time. Um, but I don't know. Maybe you have many. Jack of all trades, master of none, is that it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I know you seemed very powerful on stage last night, and I think it was very natural, and I just really appreciate you. Everyone out there, if you want to experience this man in person, I'm telling you right now, I know there are a lot of amazing shows in Vegas, but I'm going to tell you right now, there is not an experience like this. There's a lot you can watch, but there's, a, there's only one thing that you can do when you go sit in a chair in the evening, and that is go to the show with Matt Franco. Go to the show with Matt Franco. Like, ah. Um, Matt, where else can everyone find you beside the link? Yes. Um, and I'm, no, wait, let me give my little thing. Listen, everybody, the show is dope. It's amazing. I'm actually, I, I was in musicals. I've done a lot before, but I, sometimes I'm like, ugh. I'm not going to go to a show. I was in there for minute one when, I think it was Ted, right? Ted yeah, came Ted out. Ted introduces, yeah. Ted, in a, he even walked down on stage. I think people thought he was you. They were just like, oh, I'm so excited. But even his energy, yeah. even just walking into the theater, I mean, I was greeted by Tatiana. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> Tiana, Tiana, Tiana. Tiana, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tatiana. <laughs> That's her nickname for me. She'll respond to both. <laughs> sorry, Tatiana. Um, sorry, I'm kidding. Sorry, Tiana. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I was greeted by Tiana, and, you know, we were there just having a good time. So um, where, can, where else can they find you other than the link? Yeah, other than the link hotel and casino here in Las Vegas. Check me out. All the social media stuff at Matt Franco Magic. Matt with one T, like a doormat, M-A-T. <laughs> I don't know how my parents screwed that up. <laughs> uh, or MattFranco.com. You can get to me through all of that as well. We got the, the whole thing. Tour dates when we've got them. The Vegas show, the merchandise, all of it's there. Follow me on Instagram and all that stuff, and here we are. Hope to see you there. Yes. What I can promise you all is that you will have an amazing time when you go experience the show with Matt and Tiana. <laughs> <laughs> Tiana's behind the scenes. But listen, we talked about a lot here today, and the most important thing you need to remember is that you can do anything you put your mind to. You have to believe it's okay to start over and make sure you have a support system that's going to be there to help you along the way. And like I talk about when I teach classes and Matt does the same thing in his show, it's not about us. It's not about him. It's about you. So if you're a person that's a giving person or you're teaching people, just make sure you're giving the experience to them and so that everyone can have 360 degrees of transformation. Matt, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I'm bringing a lot of people to your show next time I'm back. Please do. Can't wait to have you back. Thank you. <laughs>